Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to uh, Fast Electronic and Loud. As promised, when we got the new Apple Airport Extreme, I wanted to give you guys a uh, speed test. I'm using the uh, fourth generation, which is the, before this one, the latest release Apple uh, time capsule, which has basically an Airport Extreme in it. Uh, I wanted to give you a speed test comparison between that before I actually installed the new Airport Extreme. So uh, I've just got a, basically an app that I download off the App Store. I've got the the new iPad with Retina and iPhone 5. Uh, that's the speedtest.net. You've probably seen this before. Uh, this is actually on the Apple 2 terabyte. Uh, both of these should be connected on the 5 gigahertz band. So let's go ahead and on the older version time caps, let's go ahead and begin our speed test. I'll just do one at a time here. That way we don't we can get a true measurement. Don't actually bog down both the network with a big download and upload packet. So let's allow the iPad to run its speed test here. You can see we've got a 24 millisecond ping response. Uh, download was 55.38 megabits per second, and upload sitting right about uh, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I use Comcast have the uh, Blast Plus service. So download was 55.38, upload 9.24 megabits per second, 24 second, uh, 24 millisecond ping response. So let's uh, try the same test, but on the iPhone 5. So we'll go ahead and begin test over there as well. Man, it'll just take just a second here. That that was testing through uh, Comcast uh, server hosted by Comcast uh, out of Chicago, Illinois. For those that were interested, uh, I'm located in Springfield, Illinois. It's about three hours geographically to the north. Uh, like I said, Bla Blast Plus service uh, brings those 50 meg per second download and 10 meg per second upload. Uh, that's not the focus so much of the video. Those speeds is we're just looking for consistency and let's uh, both the same 24 millisecond ping response. Uh, download speed on the iPhone 55.23, upload was 10.05. So there's one other thing that we can look at and I wanted to show you folks real quick. So let me go ahead and close this and I'm actually going to open real quick the airport utility app because I want to actually show you on both devices here what we're actually connected at you know what's our signal strength then we can use that as a good comparison when we install the new so you can see here guys I'm on the fourth generation airport time capsule if you guys want to see the information about that that is airport time capsule fourth gen 802.11n so let me see what wireless clients let's take a look the iPad 4 which is what this is uh, indicates has an excellent connection currently we are on the N band it basically 802.11 an uh, our signal strength is negative 54, so the closer to negative zero, the better. Our data rate is 150 meg per second. So let's just use the same device here and see what the iPhone 5 is working on. Uh, excellent connection as well. Uh, only 66 uh, decibels there on your uh, signal strength. Still the same 802.11an and 135 megabits per second. Both these devices are sitting side by side, so you can see 0.66 for the iPhone. Uh, but if we double check and look again on the iPad, you can see here 0.54, so that's almost uh, 12 dB. That's almost, uh, in reality, uh, triple the signal strength coming out of the iPad. That would probably be due to its larger network card, bigger battery. So let's go ahead and uh, get the new Airport Extreme installed, and we'll actually set up the same two tests here. So you folks can compare between if you want to make the jump from your fourth generation up to the new Airport Extreme 6th generation that's out from Apple. So let's get that hooked up and then we'll show you guys those tests as well. Alright guys, as you can see here, I just have the uh, airport utility app open just so that you, we can verify that the uh, new airport extreme has been installed and that is actually sitting on top of the old time capsule. The time capsule is currently powered off. These two devices are in the same location. The airport extreme, the new version, 6th gen, is in the same location. So let's go ahead and open back our speed tests.
which I reckon because we're on my local network here will probably not fluctuate at all. Uh, I did top out on both the speeds, but nonetheless, I will show you that. So let's go ahead and start with the iPad. This is the iPad uh, fourth generation iPad with the latest uh, 32 gig new Retina. So let's go ahead and let that uh, same test uh, through the speedtest.net hosted by Comcast out of Chicago. As I anticipated before the test even began, it's going to top out at its speed, which happens to be for the Blast Plus, like I said, 50 meg per second download, 10 meg upload. Appears that I've that's not going to change too much, and I didn't expect that. What I'm actually looking at is the signal strength back in airport utility, and we'll verify that. So, same millisecond, 24 millisecond response on ping, 55.61 megabit per second download, and 9.58 megabit per second upload. So let's start with the iPhone 5. I uh, anticipate it to be the same as well, so probably identical ping and very similar download and upload. So let's let that test conduct briefly again, same test, same area, same location, uh, Chicago, Illinois, hosted by Comcast through speedtest.net. And that's an app available through the App Store. I'll put a link in the description below for that app if you guys like. You can check that out. And that's almost finishing up now, so I'll be able to post the numbers here. And on the iPhone 5, we had 25 millisecond ping response, 55.39 megabits per second download, and 10.12 megabit per second upload. So a little bit faster, but like I said, that is right at my peak. Uh, it's about 7 p.m. here, so we're probably pretty maxed on our network uh, around the area, but nonetheless, I'm still getting my full speed. So let's go ahead and open up the airport utility application that's really going to start showing us a lot of information here as you folks can see we are connected to the airport extreme that's the new version and if you use the airport utility to uh on your ipad or iphone to manage the devices it does make it nice because you actually see what's going on like you can click your internet you know see things like that look at make sure your connections up and things verify ip address and i've got a couple other videos guys out there on my channel look for those and i'll put links to them uh just about you know setting up uh, your device using airport utility, but I don't want to take away from this. So let's open up the airport extreme here We're gonna to need to uh, enter a password because I've already connected and this will be the first time I've connected on the airport utility So we'll go ahead and enter the password Now that we got that password entered we can actually get some more information about our device there So let's go ahead and check out our wireless clients here we got the iPad iPhone 5 and the iPad 4 so let me verify the signal strength we looked at the iPad 4 and we'll put before and after numbers here uh, still excellent connection but let's, the main thing is actually our RSSI that's our signal strength as you can see here 43 folks uh, very significant increase in signal data rate still 150 meg per second because this is only an AN device this is not a a, this is not a AC device. This is just 802.11n in the iPad as well as the iPhone. But nonetheless, we do have an increase uh, in signal strength there uh, compared to what we had before. And I'll show you guys the, in the here before and after so you can see the identical comparisons. And let's take a look at the uh, iPhone 5, see if its signal increased. Same location, guys, for both devices as well as same location, the airport extreme from where the time capsule was. Nothing's changed. That way it makes it almost a truly identical test between the old device and the new device so let's take a look at that and as well we got 46 you guys saw we definitely had uh, an increase um, in signal strength that would be to new apple's new uh, beam forming uh, antenna array that's the type of structure they call the antenna in the new airport extreme uh, in my home particularly uh, we can tell the evidence is clear guys signal strength was a major increase we even saw remember if you remember uh, between the two devices we had quite a difference about 12 uh, decibels uh, between the two for signal strength if you remember um, and if you look now we're at 46 on the iphone and the ipad negative 43 so we're a lot closer which tells me that we've got a lot more power coming out of the new airport extreme six generation uh, as well as a lot more signal strength, uh, which totally makes me very happy. So uh, I would highly recommend, uh, if you've been on the fence about it, upgrade to this. If you have a new MacBook Air, it will run on that new 802.11 AC. Uh, and like I talked about, I'll be adding a couple 802.11 AC wireless adapters to my Dell XPS 8500. And then I'll be able to show you guys some true AC testing performance. But I wanted to show you 
real quick the difference between the latest you know before this came out Apple time capsule 2 terabyte you know with the dual band and now this airport extreme 6th generation which supports the new 802.11 AC and has the new type of antenna structure in it the evidence is clear folks uh, the signal strength is huge increase between the two devices so I would highly recommend it uh, take a look I'll put a couple links in the description below you can check out more information about this and what I've been talking about as always this was brought to you by fast electronic and loud where we always bring it to you fast, electronic, and of course loud. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.